little, tiny, boys, little guys. Look at these little guys, they're so little. Don't you want them? Don't you want to buy them? Don't you want to catch them all? Hi, I'm Jack Cuso, and uh, you can see that I'm wearing glasses to show that time has passed. Today, we're looking at the newest Bakugan gimmick toy, Nanogon. First, I'll talk about what they are and what I think of them as toys, and at the end of the video, we'll talk about how to use them in the game and what this means for Bakugan fans. A very small number of people who watch my videos are subscribed, and even fewer support me on Patreon. Subscribing is totally free, and it helps me do what I do, and starting today, I've added a $1 tier to my Patreon so you can help us make these videos even if you don't have a ton of means. I appreciate your support at absolutely any level. Thank you so much. Nanogon, another toy that sounds kind of like a different toy, but isn't that toy. Right, so right off the bat, these are not Baku Nano. Baku Nano were a support piece introduced in Mectanium Surge. They were like little tiny little weapons, little, little spring-loaded weapons that you could plug into a Bakugan. They were kind of like those small bits that came with the Baku gear, but with action. Oh, we, we got a, a Morning Star, some, uh, some shurikens, and a uh, gun. In game, they didn't do much other than add a very small B power bonus to your Bakugan, but uh, they took up a uh, a non minuscule amount of space in your deck. Back on track. Months ago, the fans found the name Nanogon leaked way before we knew what they looked like, and golly, well that was a little terrifying. The reboot has thus far borrowed most of its gimmicks from Bakugan's past, redesigning them and for the most part improving upon that past. Battle Gear to Baku Gear. Trap Bakugan to Geogon, and now we're in year four, which is the equivalent to Legacy's Mectanium Surge, the Legacy season where the quality of both the toys and gameplay took a sharp dive and dragged Bakugan into the mists of obscure cancelled toy lines. The idea of modern Bakugan taking inspiration from Baku Nanos or Mectagon is terrifying. They were the worst gimmicks to that point. In my opinion, even worse than right now cars. So, if Nanogon aren't Baku Nano, what are they? <laughs> Little, tiny, perfect boys. Baby boy, baby evil. Nanogon are the smallest marbles that Bakugan has ever made. Even smaller than B ones, and as such, they are not spring loaded and not magnetic. Each Nanogon has to be manually transformed from ball form to monster form, and let me tell ya, they're really friggin' cute. We've got Widow, Sludgem, Riptide, Bug, Scorcher, Lancer, Tingler, Fury, Scrumbler, and Sucko. Four of those names were made up, and I'm not saying which. The designs are simple, but every one of them still has a distinct look. And even more distinct than their designs are their color palettes. Nanogon possess factions and faction symbols just like normal Bakugan. Pyrus, Darkus, Ventus, Aquas, Haeus, and Aralus. But curiously, they bear very different color patterns. As far as I can tell, Nanogon take the secondary and tertiary colors from the new Bakugan Evolutions color palettes and make those their primary colors. All in all, Nanogon display a lot of color variety. You might be wondering what the point of Nanogon are if they don't pop open, and to that I say screw popping open! They can ride your Bakugan like little pets! Heck yeah! Yes! Yes! Whoa! Let's go! <laughs> They're really good. I like them. They're really good. Now, on some of them, the little peg that kind of like lets you like attach them to a Bakugan, sometimes the pegs are in a spot where the Nanogon kind of has to like ride upside down. Is this silly? Does it ruin the immersion for the Nanogon that have this problem? Could this have been avoided? These questions don't matter, and uh, I would prefer if you didn't ask them. Either way, Nanogon like Widow look pretty good on the back of pretty much any Bakugan. <laughs> Compared to Baku Nano, Nanogon represent the degree to which Spin Master now understands the true appeal of Bakugan. Back in the Legacy series, they thought the point was springs and magnets, and no, if it has springs and magnets, well then, <laughs> toe to tip, that's a Bakugan toy. No! No, it's not! Bakugan is not about magnets, and it's not about spring-loaded transformations. Bakugan, first and foremost, is a ball that turns into a monster. It's all about the ball, and it always was about the ball. 
the instinct to collect comes from some deep base trait in the human psyche. The simple appeal of having a hoard of things that all look similar, a book of stamps, a jar of pennies, or a box full of soda caps, or a bag of every fortune cookie fortune that you've gotten for the past 12 years, or a bunch of parking tickets that you keep ignoring, because if you ignore them, maybe they'll go away and you'll be fine. <laughs> the point is, they look similar, uh, but still, every single item in the collection has its own story. A unique feature or a detail that makes it special if you know your stuff. With Bakugan, the unique factor comes from the story of how you got it, the rarity or value it holds, and the fact that they turn into, you know, freaking <laughs> monsters, man, you know. It, it's the transition from the mundane to the exciting. The, the spring-loaded magnetic quality is there to make that transition explosive and cool, but it's the transition from mundane ball to cool monster that serves as Bakugan's core appeal. Your collection can be a shelf full of crazy, unique monsters, or it can be a bucket full of near-identical-looking orbs hiding their power. And Nanogon fit that description perfectly. Now you may be wondering, dear viewer, if they don't pop open and they don't have magnets or bee powers, what do they do? How do they fit into the game? They don't. The toys are non-essential to gameplay. Nanogon ain't support pieces like Geogon were because Nanogon can't do anything other than be a neat toy. This was my big praise of Bakugir and my big criticism of Geogon, and while I did come around to Geogon being a better integration into gameplay than I expected, I've gotta say, it's really nice to not have to worry about stuffing any more plastic into my deck box. This is not to say that buying a Nanogon won't help you in the game. Every Nanogon toy comes with a Nanogon card with some, uh, some, some symbols, and some numbers, and, uh, uh, stay tuned, I'll explain everything. All right, frickin' buckle up. It's rules time. Let's see what the booklet has to say. Um, oh, no, no. Oh, page one uh, appears to just be kind of a, a glossary of terms showing gate cards, character cards, beat power, etc. And this is just basic, like, standard gate battling game rules. There's stuff about Geogon, and ah, Nanogon, okay. Up to three Nanogon can be used in a game. Nanogon must match the faction colors of your team. Turn face up during a brawl and get the bonuses you have unlocked with gate and core symbols. This leaves a lot in the air. So if this version is using gate cards instead of cores, how are you supposed to like get multiple cores to activate Nanogon abilities like Siphon's plus 500? And can we bring more than three like Nanogon cards but only use three of them? Or can we, do we, do we have to choose them in advance? And what does this symbol do? <laughs> Every other page in the booklet is just another language with the exact same stuff. There's no glossary of symbols, no clarifications, there's nothing on the website or the apps, and no updates to the official rules. The only official public source for any of this information uh, is a how to play video made by our studio that's going up on the Bakugan official channel, which would have been a lot harder to make if it were not for Toolbox24, who got in touch with the game designer Gary and got some important clarifications on how Nanogon work in both the toy battling and the TCG and the gay battling game. So Nanogon are essentially a three card side deck. You choose your Nanogon based on the factions of your team. So since I've got uh, a Pyrus and uh, an Aralus on my team, I can have two Aralus and a Pyrus, or I can have a Darkus on there since I'm running a Darkus. Effects are triggered not by the cores or gate cards attached to the Bakugan in this specific battle, but the cores or gate cards attached to your entire team. So if we're two battled into the game, right? First turn, uh, I got Colossus on a normal shield. Uh, next turn, I got Gortheon on a green fist. So then I can roll Leonidas onto this Helix and activate Nano Chrysalin's effect to give myself plus 1800. And if I already had a ton of B power, I wouldn't actually have to play that effect. I could just save it for next turn if I wanted to. So as the game progresses and as you win battles, your Nanogon cards scale up and become more powerful. If you use them in the gate battling game where you have gate cards, it turns your deck into essentially three gate cards, 
three Bakugan, and three ability cards just like the Legacy game. And they don't only provide stat bonuses either, they sometimes give you symbols! Symbols! Yeah! Lots of confusion! Hexagon symbols! I don't know... I don't know what that was. That was ACDC. Was it? Yeah, they're still going. The Hexagon, the Hexagon Plus, Plus, Plus Add a core gate card to the active Bakugan. The Hexagon, the Hexagon minus, minus Remove a core from the opposing active Bakugan. The Hexagon, the Hexagon error, error symbol. Steal a core from the opposing active Bakugan. On a character card, these are compulsory static effects that activate immediately if your Bakugan is holding one of the correct cores when it opens. <laughs> if, both, if both Bakugan have one of these symbols, they resolve in order of priority rather than reverse batch order. They only activate when the Bakugan first pops open. Adding the Baku core to the Bakugan later in the battle does not trigger the effect. Most of these weird specific rulings apply to the symbols when they're on a Bakugan's character card. It is much simpler to grasp when it's coming from Nanogon, because it just goes on to the batch. Since gate cards now feature core symbols, these effects also apply to gate cards in the gate battling game. Which would mean stealing an entire gate card from your opponent, which is kind of hilarious. I'm gonna be real, these effects are very strong. If you wanna win, you have to have them. In both the TCG, the TBG, and the GBG. If you don't wanna use them, you'll just be weaker. Plain and simple. They're pure power creep, but that doesn't make them inherently a bad addition to the game. So far, I found the mechanic of trying to get specific cores to activate your Nanogon interesting. It's not mind-blowing, but it is different, and it's been pretty neat seeing just how much that affects deck building. Now, do we really need another thing to think about while playing the TCG? No. What the TCG needs is interesting card effects, like Fury, or Rapid Fire, or Underdog. Stuff that does more than just add numbers, or interact with Baku cores, or gimmick triggers. Nanogon aren't for the TCG, because the TCG is on hiatus. So what are Nanogon for? BABY GAME! You want complexity? You want strategy? You want deep, engaging gameplay? No! You wanna play pay to win rock, paper, scissors. You wanna huck plastic and do basic math for three minutes, then get bored and play video games instead. Yeah, but seriously, Nanogon are clearly designed for the toy versions of the game, and compared to how little strategy the baby game has had to this point, Nanogon actually bring a lot to the table. Now, instead of brainlessly picking the strongest Bakugan and aiming for the strongest cores, a kid will be rewarded for carefully building a Bakugan team that works well with the Nanogon that they're using. You have to keep in mind static character card effects. You need to carefully choose what core to roll onto to activate your Nanogon abilities. You need to look at what effects your opponent's character cards have. You need to carefully choose when to use a Geogon or a Baku gear. The toy game still is not as fun or as evergreen as the TCG, but it's been been made a little bit more complex and a little bit more interesting than it once was. There's some actual tools for counterplay now, and it's gonna take some very careful strategizing, deck building, and timing to make most of these tools work. Wouldn't it be easier and a little bit simpler to just put all these effects onto ability cards and then make an actual deck for them and then make it a TCG? <laughs> That's a topic for another time. We're here to talk about Nanogon, so what are my thoughts overall? They're friggin' cute toys. Highly collectible critters that fit really well with Bakugan's image and appeal. The product design is also more ethical than previous gimmicks since you don't need three play sets of each Nanogon card to use them effectively. Nanogon have made the simplistic toy game more interesting for 2020, but at the expense of power creep in the TCG to kind of a needlessly bogged down place without giving a ton for the hardcore fanbase to sink our teeth into. But regardless of all of that, considering the TCG hiatus, I think they've actually done a really nice thing and designed a pretty good gimmick for the year. I, I know I'll be collecting as many as I can get my grubby little consumerist hands on. Sometimes I truly disgust myself. Thanks for watching. Do a like and a uh, do a subscribe and comment your favorite. Uh, let me know uh, what your favorite little guys are. This is Jack Cuso, and I'll see you next time. Hoop.
Thank you so much to my diamond patron Chell, my titan patrons Sierra107, Shevitis, Skinny Chalk, and Varen OOC. And now that I've added a $1 tier to my Patreon, all of my base patrons have been upgraded to hyper patrons, so they're gonna be listed here as well. So thanks to Gavin Greenlee, Jackson B, and Trouble for supporting me on Patreon. If you've ever thought about helping out the channel and supporting what we do here, now is the perfect time to go to Patreon, pledge $1. If enough of you do that, it'll help the channel out. Just, I can't even describe how huge that would be in helping me create what I'm trying to create here and make even more now that I'm back from, admittedly, a long hiatus. So, thank you to everyone who stuck around through the, the long break, and uh, I hope you're all going to enjoy the stuff that I'm going to be making soon. Symbol symbols. Uh, yeah, lots of confusing hexagon symbols. There we go. I have to say the We're gonna have a little song there. Uh-huh. It's gonna be really good. Jet Kuso rap video. <laughs> yeah. Two million views.